Hey everyone, Steve Walsh here again for another episode of Sunday School. In this episode, I'm going to be showing you how to use the CRAM testing framework to uh, add some tests to your command line applications. Um, sometimes it's hard to unit test stuff, uh, or maybe unit testing just doesn't make sense, uh, in which case you want to do whole functional tests, and CRAM's a really nice, elegant little framework for doing that. Um, so first things first, uh, I'm going to be testing this little friendly find utility I've been uh, working on lately. It's basically just um, going to be a better version of find, or a, a friendlier version of find. Probably won't be as fast, but uh, it'll be a little bit saner to work with instead of find's crazy command line options. So the first thing we're going to do, uh, go to a terminal, and I'm going to, first I'm going to clone down my project. Oops, I already have a, let me just uh, kill that just so you can see that I'm doing this all from scratch. So clone down friendly find. See in there, and there's this little binary here. Uh, it's not actually binary, it's Python script, but it doesn't really matter. Um, and all it does is find, you know, it's like if you had run find dot, um, it would do everything except friendly find will, as you can see, ignore the HG directory because you almost never care about what's in there. Um, so just simple stuff like that. Um, you know, it has uh, it has most functionality right now. You can see it's got a lot. Um, right now, the time doesn't work, but everything else works. Okay, so I want to add some unit tests to this. So what I'm going to do is I already made a test directory actually, um, and actually I'm just going to oops, I'm just going to remove these just so you can see I'm doing this from scratch. Okay. So those are gone. Now, I'm going to go ahead and install CRAM. Uh, there's instructions on the web page. I'm going to do it in a virtual env. Um, I'll just name it after this so that you can see that I'm not doing anything funky here. Ignore that. That's just fish crap. All right. So I'm in a virtual env, and I'm going to pip install. Um, you could just do pip install CRAM. I'm actually going to install my fork of it because it has a little bit of syntax highlighting that makes it look a little bit easier to work with. But if you just want to install the plain CRAM, it'll work fine. Um, oops. Oops, cram. At tip. Egg equals cram. That should do it. It's going to download and unpack. Nope. Uh, what did you not like? Oh, I'm sorry. Have to put the dash E there. Otherwise, it'll try to. Oh, no? Still no? Sorry, I always forget that. It's bitbucket.org, not bitbucket.com. Okay, sorry about that. So now we've got cram installed. We should have a cram binary, yep. Okay, so the way cram works is you write tests that look like shell transcripts. So if we go into the tests folder, and um, let's just pick a feature to test. Uh, it doesn't really matter right now, but I'm gonna say that we're gonna do case sensitive sensitivity. And uh, cram tests uh, by convention end with a dot t. So this is we're going to test uh, you know the, the different case sensitivity options uh, in friendly find. So I'm going to go ahead and open up a split window so I have a terminal here. Um, let me get back to the right place. Okay. So here we're in the test directory. If I write this file, we'll see it over here. Okay. So if we just run cram and we have to tell it what to test, and you, so usually I just say star dot t. Um, oops, I have to work on the virtual one. Sorry. Um, if you just install it system wide, you won't need to do that, but I'm a Python developer, so I like that. Okay, so by default, cram skips empty tests, and this test is empty, so let's write something. Like so we're going to start by setting up uh, an alias that we can use in the test. So cram tests look like this. You can have comments at the top level, and then if you indent by two spaces, that starts an actual test block. And so you basically just write shell commands preceded with the dollar sign. It looks like a shell prompt. Um, so we're going to say alias um, find equals. And then we need to tell it where our binary is. And so cram gives you this tester environment variable in your tests, which is going to point at this test directory. right? And so it's going to point at this slash tests here. And so if we look at the directory above that, that's where that's where f find is friendly find, right? So we're going to alias that to just be there. And now if we run cram, you can see that it ran the test and it succeeded. It, uh, I mean, it doesn't really do anything crazy right now, but if we look, um, 
let's uh, let's do an example. So um, we're gonna say uh, if I is case sensitive by default. So this is a little comment, and now let's test that. So how are we gonna test this? Well, first um, I'm gonna first thing to know is that when Cram runs each test, it gives it, it is its own temporary directory. So you can do any setup, you know, create files, whatever you need to do, and it'll just be blown away at the end of the test run. So let's create a couple files. Um, let's say touch uh, foo and touch uh, boo. And just for good measure, moo. Okay, so we got three files. We're we'll running again. Um, oh, ignore that for right now. Um, okay, so let's let's test the case sensitivity. So if we just search for uh, here, let's, let's show you what it looks like. Find, and now you just run it. Um, if we just run it, it should find everything, right? Um, because we're not giving it a search pattern, so it's just gonna find everything, even though it's case sensitive. So let's run it. And actually, let's turn color on, because I'm using my fork of cram. It'll be a little easier to see. And before we do that, let's actually clear the screen. There we go. Uh, so you can see that, uh, oh. Hmm. Tester, oh, sorry. The, the ffind Python script isn't in the test directory, it's one level up. So if we do that, there we go. Um, you can see that Cram gives you this little unified diff style output. So you can see that this test failed because we didn't tell it what output it was gonna be. And so the output is gonna be foo, foo, and moo. Now one thing to remember, or to be conscious of, uh, is that this particular script isn't necessarily, uh, it doesn't necessarily list the files in order. So I'm going to hit and add a sort call to here, right, just so that we always get the same output. Otherwise, Cram is not going to be able to compare the output meaningfully. Um, so if I write that, uh, Cram's going to fail, right, because we sorted the output now, which is right. Um, so what's really cool is that Cram has this interactive mode where you can add a dash i to the options, and if a test fails a chunk, it'll show you and ask you if you want to accept the change. So if I say yes, and we go back over here, and Vim should reload it, but I'm just going to manually reload it, you can see that it changed it now, right in the file for us. So we don't actually have to, to write anything, really, um, at least none of the output. Um, so let's go ahead and write some case sensitivity tests. If we search for um, foo, we'll be able to find it. If we search for capital F foo, we're not going to find it, right? Because it's a lowercase here and a capital here. So if we write that, run interactive again, it says, okay, that line changed. That's correct, because it's case sensitive. I'll say yes. There we go. Let's uh, reload it. There we go. So that's correct. Um, let's search for um, OO. Now, since it's case sensitive, that should find foo and boo, but not moo. Right? Yep, so it, sound, it found boo and foo. Say yes. Um, and really, I should be type sorting all of these. Oops. Sorry. I should read it first. Ah, that's good enough. Okay. There we go. Accept that change. Reload. Okay. And I have a little bit of folding configured. Um, I wrote a Vim uh, plugin for cram tests, so you can fold like whole blocks like this, and it actually becomes really easy to read. And you can just unfold, you can fold output, that kind of stuff. So let's add a couple more tests. Um, I actually don't like the way that looks. Okay. Um, so let's try it with case insensitive. So this one, remember this command previously didn't find anything. Now if we make it case insensitive with dash i, it should find foo. Yep, accept the change, edit, there we go. Um, one thing I do like to do is uh, use a little program called Kicker on OS X. Um, it, it basically just watches uh, a certain set of files, and if anything changes, it reruns a command. So we're going to use Kicker to run our cram tests. So cram color, um, dash i, right, so no, yeah, dash interactive, so we're still going to run it in interactive mode. Um, we're going to run it on star.t, so run it on all the tests, 
And we're going to do that whenever anything changes in this directory. There we go. So now, um, ignore the little warning that'll only happen once if we write it. It'll rerun the tests. So now let's add another test. This should find all three files, and as you can see, it did. So let's accept the change, refresh over here, right? There we go. Um, so this actually becomes a really quick way of you know writing tests and getting feedback and making sure it's correct, um, because you can have these two windows open. And you can just you know write a couple of test cases, uh, write the file, accept the the output, and uh, you should be good to go. Let's do a couple more. Um, let's test smart casing. A smart casing is kind of like um, Axe, if you've ever used the Axe program, it's that smart casing, where if you have any, um, if you have any uppercase characters in the search pattern, it's case sensitive. Otherwise, if it's all lowercase, it's case insensitive. So here, we have all lowercase characters, so it's going to find all files. But if we have it here, and we had an uppercase character in the pattern, oops, then it, it'll uh, do case sensitivity. So in this case, since we have uppercase characters, it'll only find them. So we write those. We see, yep, it found all three over here. And then it just found the one. That's right. So let's accept the change. Edit the file over here to load our changes in. We can see. There we go. And uh, these tests are actually really nice to, uh, to just read, right? They're pretty simple. They just read like shell trans uh, transcripts. So hopefully you found that useful. Uh, maybe your next command line utility will do some... Uh, some functional testing. Um, these can really be helpful in finding lots of bugs. And these are really nice because if a user sends you, you know, a lot of times people will find a bug and, you know, they'll open a, an issue on GitHub or Bitbucket or whatever, and they'll, uh, they'll you know, paste in a shell transcript for you so you can reproduce the problem. Well, you can just copy and paste that pretty much into a cram test, and uh, then you have a test to make sure that problem never happens again. Um, so it's really nice. Um, just a little bit of a history. Cram was kind of built from Mercurial's uh, custom testing framework. Mercurial uses a framework much like this, uh, and then Brody Rao pulled it out into its own thing, so you can use it. Um, like I said, it's just a testing framework. It's not dependent on Python or anything. I mean, you need Python to run it, but it doesn't, I mean, these apps can be anything. You can, you can, you can write, you can test anything, really. You could even test shell built-ins if you want to. Um, so, yeah, I uh, hope you found this useful. Uh, let me know if you have any questions. I'll put a link to Cram in the video description. So, thanks.